The word Flutter means many things because the tech stack behind it has countless layers and facets. Of course, it's the framework widgets written in Dart that power our UIs. It's also the engine and the rendering pipelines that convert those widgets into pixels. But it's also the glue code between the host platform and your app and the various threads where different code executes. Today, we're gonna to discuss a change to the lowest level of Flutter's design, covering what the Flutter engine has been up to for the last 10 years, as well as what it's gonna be up to for the next 10 years and beyond. Let's get started. As we outlined in the final episode of How Flutter Works, which covered details of the Flutter engine and its various embedders, on mobile and desktop, the engine has historically spun up two additional threads, which we call the UI thread and the raster thread. The UI thread has been where your Dart code runs, while the raster thread has been where the engine does most of its work to actually convert your UI into pixels. Now, having two threads is important as it allows these two tasks to work in synchrony. Your UI thread can hand off frame N to the raster thread and then start work on frame N plus one's widget and render trees while the raster thread finishes rendering frame N. This design is crucial for Flutter's ability to hit 60 or 120 frames per second. But those aren't the only two threads. They're just the threads started by the Flutter engine. Obviously, there has to be another thread running somewhere where the Flutter engine is initialized. That thread is the native platform thread, which runs all of your Swift code on iOS or your Kotlin on Android. iOS and Android have their own names for those threads, but Flutter calls them both the platform thread, since they play the same role from Flutter's perspective. This gap between the platform thread and Flutter's UI thread causes problems, because anytime your app needs to talk to the native platform APIs, it has to jump across this wide chasm. That transmission of messages between threads and languages is what platform channels are for. And the boilerplate to facilitate them is what the pigeon package generates. And all those problems I mentioned? Well, they include the forced use of futures on any function call that must pass through a platform channel to complete, which complicates some native APIs, which must be synchronous. Another problem is that all of these payloads have to be fully serialized, meaning type safety on parameters and return types are lost. But here's the kicker. That platform thread running any Swift or Kotlin? Well, Flutter apps don't tend to have a ton of that. So it pretty much just sits there, kind of twiddling its thumbs. Now, armed with this knowledge, you might be able to guess which thread is going to be merged into which other thread. The answer is that Flutter is doing away with its own UI thread, and instead migrating all of our Dart code on to the main platform thread. This simplifies calling native code and allows for protocols like FFI to preserve type safety when reaching out to native APIs written in Swift or Kotlin. So what does all this mean for you as a Flutter developer? Well, that kind of depends on what kind of code you write and what phase of the migration you find yourself in. It's helpful to think about this migration as happening in two phases, kind of like the null safety migration, which had a transitory phase and a completed phase. The first part is when work is ongoing and not universally applied which is where we are as of the release of this video. Throughout this phase, there are a few things to think about. The first concern is for plugin authors, which is to relocate any custom logic that you may currently be executing on the platform thread. Historically, this was a reasonable way to move intensive computations off of Flutter's UI thread and make them non-blocking. Now, with Flutter's UI thread being subsumed by the platform thread, those computations could once again overflow frame budgets and block the UI. As always, the recommended API here is to move those computations onto a standalone isolate, which should never threaten your app's frame rate. For more info on executing background tasks with an isolate, check the resources linked below. The second thing applies to plugin authors or app developers who are using native interop. Those developers might spin up a new Git branch, bump their minimum SDK version to at least 3.29, and then run your app or plugin on a platform which has completed its thread merge and experiment using FFI to synchronously call native functions. For the best experience using FFI in Dart, we recommend using FFI Gen, whose instructions are linked in the notes below. Now, plugin authors don't publish that version as your next major release just yet. 
That should wait until all platforms have completed their thread merge with no opt-outs. At that point, the thread merge migration will be completed, and you will be able to safely publish new releases, which pin a higher minimum Flutter SDK. After that, app developers will be able to incorporate these new releases, and all Flutter apps will benefit from these improvements. As this process advances, the API surfaces of some plugins may change. For example, from this to this. And now since nobody likes breaking changes, all of this raises the question, is removing features from some function signatures worth the headache? Well, we absolutely think so. Imagine you're writing a widget which calls this method to display info about the device's battery. That function is synchronous in native APIs, but without the thread merge, Flutter calls to it have been forced to use a platform channel and were thus asynchronous. A minimum widget to render this phone's charge might look like this. First, you have to use a stateful widget to store a nullable int or double. Then you have to call the API in a new method invoked from init state. Once that resolves, you set your value and call set state. In your build method, you have to show some sort of indicator or placeholder until the value is set, and then afterward, render the value itself. Now that's a lot of code, but watch how much of it disappears after the plugin in question updates its API to remove that future. First, the get battery info method becomes synchronous, and it can be called directly in the build method, removing any need for a check or placeholder. Second, we can delete init state, the helper function, and even the nullable battery charge variable. And lastly, this doesn't even need to be a stateful widget anymore. Well, look how much simpler that is. Within plugins, developers will also be able to write more of their code in Dart, especially in situations where multiple calls are needed in sequence. Consider this situation, where completing a task your app needs involves three native functions, plus some special computations between each step. Because thread hops are slow, you would not want to write your calculations and computations in Dart, because that would incur six expensive thread hops. Instead, in the old days, the most performant way to implement this plugin would have been to write your custom logic in native code, as that eliminates all but the obviously necessary two thread hops you could never avoid. The downside, of course, is that you then have to code up that custom logic for every platform. Once each call is synchronous and handled by FFI, you can safely pull any special computations back into Dart, reducing code duplication because FFI incurs a much smaller performance penalty. This greatly simplifies the task of calling native code, reducing the friction between your apps and the awesome functionality of their native platforms. The thread merge has been a long time coming in Flutter, and we're very excited to have made so much progress on it so far. Work is still ongoing to dot every I and cross every T, but we're excited for Flutter's improved native interop efforts to speed up both the development and use of all of our Flutter apps. For more info on the great thread merge and everything else about Flutter, head to flutter.dev.